All right. So yesterday we did two things. We found how to find the mean or the expected value, right? And the second thing was standard deviation. How to find standard deviation of a um, standard deviation of a um, random variables of a probability uh, model, right? So we did two examples. No, we did three. Um, so for example, for this one here, how many languages? The average was 1.457. So on average, we would one to two. In practical terms, in real life, one to two languages, right? If I randomly picked a US um, high school student, they'd probably be able to speak somewhere between one and two languages. Somewhere between, somewhere to one, one or two languages. Mm -hmm. As long as you have that number with it, yes. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, great question. Because part of the reason, um, free response, you have to like write it out, right? You have to actually explain what it means. So yeah, what Josh said was a great question. Do we use this number or can we say one to two? If you calculate this number, that's enough. And then you can put it in your own words, right? That's fine, yeah. But if you don't have this work back there, then it's, you know, it's just, you're more estimating. So yeah, as long as you have the work to back it up, you're good. Uh, standard deviation, standard deviation 0.672. So that means on average, they speak one to four, 1.457 languages. That number can vary by 0.672. So they can go up to two languages or down to one language. Okay, makes sense. Um, we didn't talk about variance. Rarely, I mean rarely. When I say rarely, I mean rarely will they ask you about variance, but it does come up. Variance, all variance is, how do I, anyone know how I go from standard deviation to variance? It's super easy, just we don't really talk about it a lot. What's the difference between these two guys here, the calculations here? Yeah, you just don't take the square root, all right? So that 4.451, that's variance. Mm -hmm. If you want to be a square, or you could just square the square root, right? Square it. You do everything the same. You just don't take the square root, okay? So when they talk about variance, it's the same thing as, it's not the same number, but it's the same idea as standard deviation. Why we use variance and standard deviation, I don't know. Like I said, 99.9% .9 of the time you see a question, it's going to be standard deviation. Deviation. They won't talk about variance. But once in a blue moon, they'll throw a variance question out there and they'll talk about the variance. And you're like, I don't know what that is. Talk about it like you would talk about standard deviation. Because it's really the same definition, just without square rooting it. Okay. All right. So we did that a couple times few more times and then we stopped right there that's all we did right so now we're going to get into different types of problems um where we have to create a table or a graph and then answer a question okay so for this question here it says the a coin that is rigged is flipped three times the probability of heads is twice the probability of tails Find the probability distribution model of the discrete random variable X. So here we go. So this is the part that we want here. X counts the number of heads. That's what our random variable is gonna be. So our random variable is gonna be here and then the probability of it is gonna be here. Okay. So that part I highlighted, how many different things can happen with that part I highlighted? the number of heads that can happen. I could get three heads, right? How many times am I flipping a coin? So I could get three heads. Is there anything else that could happen? Or zero heads, yeah. So let's write that down. I could get zero heads. I could get one. I could get two. I could get three. Nothing else can happen. I can't get negative. Can't get four. I can't get 1.5. I 
I can only get those numbers there. Okay. So these are our X values, but since it's your notes, maybe we should um, uh, maybe we should label a little better so you remember what this is. So a lot of times I'll just put an X there for random variable, but since it's your notes, we will label it a little better than that. So it's the probability of the number. Okay. Well, normally when I flip a coin, it's 50-50, right? We talked about why it's 50-50 last chapter. One half, right? But this one's different. This one, like a rigged die, it's a rigged coin. Means it's going to be tails double of the time it's going to be heads. So for every two tail in the long run, for every two tails I get, I'm going to get one heads. I'll say, wait. Oh, sorry. The other way around. Yep. In real life, a regular coin in the long run, for every heads I get, I'm going to get one tails, right? That's a, that's a coin, a regular coin, right? This one is rigged so that in the long run, for every two heads I get, I will only get one tails. What's the probability that I get zero heads there? One head, two heads, all three heads. How do I how do I figure out the probabilities here? Think of what we would do last chapter. How would I figure out the probabilities for each of those last chapter? What is the way we solved almost 100% of every single problem that we had? What were the ways that we solved them? Say it more time. Formulas, we use formulas, that was one way. Tree diagram was another way. Venn diagram or two-way tables. Almost every single problem we had last chapter, one of those four or more of, you know, we, that's what we use, those were our tools. Which of those tools would help us with this problem here, finding probabilities here? I would say a tree diagram is probably the best way because there's three things that are gonna happen, right? So the first thing that's gonna happen is I flip a coin. It's got two sides, so it's either a heads or a tails. Here's the question here. What is the probability that I get a heads? So it's gonna be whatever this number is here, it's gonna be double what this number is here, right? So this would be two X and this would be regular X, right? It's double. So think of a probability, only two things can happen, right? So it's gotta equal one whole or very, very close to it, right? So what probabilities, when I add together, make one whole or close to it, but are double each other? There you go. 0.33 and 0.66. Now, if I keep going long enough, 0 0.66, 0 0.66, 0 0.66, 0 0.66, and 0.33333333, it'll be like 0.99999, right? But I'm just going to stop there and round it. You can put 0 0.67 and 0.33. That would work too. Okay. Since I rounded that, they equal one whole and they're double or if I round it, they're double, right? That's one event. So if I flip a coin once, the chances I get a heads is about 66.7%. The chances I get tails is about 33.3%, okay? So I gotta do that again now. I'm gonna flip it again. Again, two things can happen, a heads or a tails. So let's say I got heads the first time. I flip it again. What's the probability I get heads again? Yeah, the same, the same. I'm still using the same coin, right? So the probability is not going to change. 
How about if I flip it, get a tails the first time? What's the probability I get a heads on the second one? Yeah, it doesn't change, right? It's a coin. One more time. Heads, tails, heads, tails, heads, tails, heads, and tails. Are the probabilities going to be the same? Are they going to remain consistent? Yes, they will. Okay. Yeah, everything's theoretical here, so we're not worried about that. Okay. Okay, so done, right? So let's go back to the question. What's the probability I get zero heads? There's only one path there, right? There's only one path to get zero heads. Tails, tails, tails. Point zero three five. Okay. So let's go to the table. Zero three five. Yeah. That's fine. Okay. Now let's let's do the next easy one. The next easy one's going to be three because there's only one path for three, right? All three heads. That one's going to be yep. It's going to be this path here, 6.67 times 0.67 times 0.67. What do you get? 0.287. Okay. Now this is where it gets a little bit tricky. We got to find the, now we got to find the path where I get only one head. Okay. Yep. So it's going to start with a head, a tail, a tail. Head, tail, tail is 0.667 times 0.333 times 0.333. What'd you get? Thank you. Is that the only path that's going to give me one heads? No, there is another. Tails, tails, heads. It's the same number, right? 0. 0.6, 0. 0.074. And I think there's one more path that gives me one heads, right? Tails, tails heads, tails. The nice thing is it gives me the same percent every time. Whoops. So what do we do? How do we get the number for one? So point so point zero seven we put in our table. No, we don't. If I had it up here, I'd show it to you. How do we figure out the number? There you go. Because isn't there three paths? There's three paths, right? Each one of them is point zero seven four. So you got to add all of them up. So when you add all of them up, what do you get? When you add all of them up, what do you get? Point two, point two, two. So it's three times 0 0.074. Okay. Now the only other paths that are left have to be two heads. So let me get a different color here. Uh, I haven't used green. Here we go. So heads, heads, tails. There's one path there. 
and heads, tails, heads. There's another path there. So 0 0.667 times 0 0.667 times 0 0.333, what do you get? And I'm going to get that twice because there's two paths there. Point six six seven times point six six seven times point three three three. Oh, it's less than that. What is one of them? What is one of them? For just one of them. Yeah. Okay. And then when you add them together, what do you get? Point. Wait, wait, wait. When you add these two together, the 0.146? There's one more. There's one more? Yeah. Oh, that's why. So 146 times 3? 438. So all together to verify, we would add them all up. And if it's very, very close to one hole, we're good to go. Okay. All right. So the next thing they want us to do is they want us to draw a probability histogram with the values there. Histograms are just bars, right? So we start with zero, one, two, three, and stop right there. So, and then I gotta do probabilities. They go up to point, almost point 0.5, so I'm gonna go up to almost point, to point 0.5. So I'm going to label this is number of heads, and this is relative frequency. Mm -hmm. Number symbol. Oh no, that's fine. The hashtag, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. No, hashtag is fine. Yeah, yeah. Shorthand is um, symbols are fine. Absolutely, yeah. Um, now, when I say symbols, if they're used like we use that for number, like use it as a number, yeah, that's fine. Absolutely, absolutely, that's fine. Mm -hmm. For sure. Okay. Um, okay. So, zero heads. Point three zero three five. The lowest probability there, right? Zero heads. Where do I put that bar? Between zero. between zero and one. Yeah, how come it's gonna be between zero? So this is what it's gonna look like. My question is, why does it look like this? Why does it look like that? It's not one, so why is it on one? because it's not at one, it's everything up to one, right? And you can't have anything in between. They're discrete, right? You can't have anything from z between zero and one, right? So it goes from zero to up to one, okay? And I can't have point whatever heads, right? You either have a whole one or not, okay? So the next one's one, one to two, so it's gonna be 22%. The next one is two to three. That's the big one. That's a little, it's. And then the last one, even though we don't go to four, I gotta have a four on here. Okay, there we go. So looking at the histogram, 
if I flip a coin three times, if I flip this coin, not a regular coin, this is a, not a regular coin, right? If I flip this coin three times, what would I expect to get? A two, three, maybe, you know, yeah, two or three, yeah. Two or three, right? Those were the, that's where the high bars are, right? So that's what we're gonna do next. What is the expected number? Okay, what is the expected number? This is what we did yesterday. No, the No. All right. So now we have to. We're gonna find. We're gonna calculate using the calculator, but we gotta show enough information to say this is how I got the number, right? So remember, expected value starts with the first random variable. What is the first random variable in our chart? Zero. What's the probability of that? 0 0.035 plus the next random variable, which is one, times the probability of one. What's the probability of one? 0.22. Now, this one only has four random variables. So instead of going dot, 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 let's just do them all. 2 times 0.438. And then the last one is 3 times 0.287. Okay. Now you can crunch numbers on your calculator, or we can do it using the rate, using the graphing calculator, right? All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this table here in our lists. So we're gonna go to L1 and L2. Once I get my calculator going. Okay, so we go to edit. I'm gonna erase any table I have because I don't need it. All right, so I have zero, one, two, three. Uh, point zero three five, point two two, point four three eight, point two eight seven. Then I go to stat calc one var stats. This is the only time in the history of this class you will use frequency list. Every other time you use frequency list besides this stuff that we're doing now, it's going to be blank. But since our, we do have a frequency list, those are the percentages. Those are the decimals. So we have to put it there. And we get X bar, the top one, is our expected value. So our expected value is 1.997, which is pretty much 2, right? We would say, I would write down that number. I would write down that number, and in, in my explanation, I would say we can expect to get about a two, about two heads. Okay. Now, standard deviation. So, standard deviation. Okay. So, remember, for standard deviation, it's a little different. We're going to take the random variable, so zero, and minus the mean square it, and then times that guy. So we're going to do that for every single one of them. Okay. 
And then you already have it. It's already on that list. You already have the number. You're just trying to verify. You're just trying to show how you got it. If it's a free response question, yes. If it's a multiple choice question, no. You, I don't grade work on multiple choice questions. Yes, if it's super long, see some of these are even worse than the long ones because it's kind of in the middle. It's not really a long one, but it's not really a short one either. I'd rather have a list that's a lot longer so I can use the dot, dot, dot. It has to, yeah, two, you start with the first two, dot, 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 do the last one. Um, but yeah, like I said, if it, it, it's worse, if it's like, this one's four, so it's just like an extra one. So might as well do. Okay, and then square root. And what was that number? Point what? 8109, so 811. Point 8.11. Point eight one two, point eight one three. So if I rolled it, so if I uh, flipped this coin three times, I would expect to get two heads. That number will vary by 0.813. Okay. All right. So I want you to do the next example on your own. Max and PCs. Okay. So. This one is four students, so you gotta so you gotta go four deep. So for zero, for zero PCs, it's all max. So there's only one way there. Mac, 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 mac. So point three, point three, point three, point three, which is point zero zero eight one. The other way there's only one path is four. All PCs. Right? PC, 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 which is point seven times 0.7 times 0.7 times 0.7, which I got 0 0.2401, okay? And then in the middle, it doesn't really matter which one you go. I went one, so one PC. So the paths that gave me one PC, and that's in yellow. The ones in yellow only give me one PC. So I hit Mac, 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 PC. And then I get Mac, Mac, PC, Mac. And then I get Mac, PC, Mac, Mac. That's three. And then the bottom has one. PC, Mac, Mac, Mac. So all of those give me 0 0.0189. So I added all of those up, all the yellow paths, and I got 0 0.0756. There's four paths, and each of them was 0 0.0189. Okay. And then the last, the green one I did, the green one was for three PCs, for three PCs. For three PCs, I got Mac, PC, PC, PC. That's this green one here. PC, Mac, PC, PC. That's this green one here. PC, PC, Mac, PC. That's this green one here. And then the last one I got was PC, 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 Mac. There's four of those. Each of them have 0 0.1029 probability. 0.1029 plus 0.1029 plus 0.1029 plus 0.1029 is 0.4116.
that left this one in here. Well, if they're all supposed to add to one, I just did, I added them all up, subtracted it from one, and I got the leftover yeah. stuff. Okay. So it looks like the highest bar would be for three. Does that make sense that the highest bar would be for three? Why, yeah, why does that make sense? Exactly, three is the closest, three out of four is the closest to 70%. It's not exactly, but it's close, okay? And then two and four, Two out of four is 50%, four out of four is 100%. Those are not as close, but they're closer than these two up here are. One out of four is 25%, zero out of four is zero percent. Okay, so it starts to fade away. You see the peak here, and then it starts to, so the peak would be here. So it would kind of look like this. It would kind of be rising up, and then there, and then it would drop off kind of there. Okay. So now, expected number. Okay. So expected number, expected count. Oops. So expected uh would be the first one was zero times the probability of zero which was 0 0.0081 times one the probability of one pc zero seven five six plus dot 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 plus at the end the last one was four and 0 0.2401. And then I go to my calculator. 2.7195. Perfect. It's about 2.8. Yeah. yeah, closest to three, right? which we expected to be the highest, right? Three out of four was 75%. And there was a 70% chance that a student liked a PC or used a PC, right? So a little bit, we would expect a little bit under three, which it is. Okay. And then we got the standard deviation, which is first random, random variable, minus 2.7995 squared times the probability plus the second random variable minus the expected value times the probability, sorry. Yep, that's exactly what I was going to say. Right after this, I'm going to show you. This is the one they give you. This is one of the ones they give you for sure. Uh, 4 minus 2.7995 squared, and that probability is 2401. Equals, what was it equal? Okay. Okay. So in your notes, we haven't really, I haven't had you um, um, interpret them. Because we've done that, we've done that in past chapters, but just remember, if we have to interpret it, read the question to see if you have to interpret the, the mean or the standard deviation. 
Okay. If it says interpret, make sure you interpret. Okay. So, like, I was trying to make that again for this one. Yeah. And it just, like, wasn't a lot of space. Yes. Like, you so, need space. Yep. Yes, there is a quick way to do it. And later this chapter, I'll teach you. Okay. It's called binomial distribution. Yeah, and, like, and yes, yes, like there's a quick way to do it. Yes, there's a quick way to do it. Uh, yeah, it's definitely a quick way to do it. I'm not going to show you today, but that's the next section. 6.2 in your notes, in your uh, in your book. That's binomial distribution, and we'll we'll cover that next week. Mm -hmm. I know, I know, I know. It's, it's too much, right? Okay. All right. Let's see. Do I want to start the next one? Nah, let's not start it. We'll, or we'll, we'll at least let's at least do the table. We can do the table in a few minutes, and then we'll do the mean and standard deviation on on Monday when we get back. Okay, so this is a lottery. These are the questions people like because it involves gambling. For some reason, people like to talk about gambling. I don't know why. So the daily lottery consists costs a dollar to play. So you pay a dollar, you play. So the game is you pick a three-digit number, any three-digit number you want to pick. And if your number comes up, you win $500. That's the game, right? Okay. So the random variables are things that can happen things that can happen if I play this game. What are the things that could happen if I play this game? So in terms of outcomes, exactly, win or lose. How can I put those in numerical value? Because I, I can't put wins and lose. I have to put numbers here, right? Zero. So why would I pick zero? Why would I pick one? So zero means I win nothing. I lose, right? And what does one mean? But I, how, why would you pick one? I get what you're saying, but why would you pick one for winning? Because usually it's 100%. And 100% means one. Probabilities go on the other side. So zero I get. So let's do that. I could win zero dollars. So this is going to be money one. There you go. I think I like that one better because it represents what I actually win. 500. Right? Is there anything else that could happen? I could win $0 or I can win $500. Can I win $10? Could I win $25? Could I win $50? Not for this game. That's it. It's a simple game. All right. So... What's the probability that I win zero? No, let's go to the let's go to the good one. Five hundred. What's the probability I win five hundred dollars? So, yeah. So you pick a three-digit number. Any three-digit number. Any number that's got three digits in it, you pick one. If your three-digit number comes up, you win that money. Uh, yeah, yes, yes, zero, zero, not even zero, zero, one, zero, zero, zero to nine, nine, nine. So how many numbers are from zero, zero, zero to nine, nine, nine? A thousand, exactly a thousand. So it's going to be out of a thousand, right? And then what's the number on top? One, right? Because I'm only buying one ticket, right? This is for one ticket. So what's the probability I lose? In other words, 0 0.999 and 0 0.001, right? There is a chance. Okay, and that's where we'll stop. And that exactly, there is a chance. There is a chance.